So awake surgery, what is it? What does it entail? And does it really happen? In this video today, we're going to be talking about patients that undergo surgery, but they're fully awake. What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. So awake surgery, what is it? What does it entail? And who undergoes awake surgery? Well, it actually does happen. We do a lot of surgeries in orthopedics from knee replacements to hip replacements to carpal tunnel release, which you're releasing the median nerve within the wrists. We do surgery on the spine. We do surgery on the foot and ankle, broken tibias. If a patient has a fracture in their hip, we can replace that hip. So lots of different surgeries. And then patients, they have lots of different medical conditions. There have been several studies that have come out that stating that awake surgery is actually better than undergoing general anesthesia for that particular surgery. Awake surgery usually entails some type of anesthetic. This anesthetic can be local, which means we put a medication, sometimes lidocaine or marcaine, into the patient's surgical site to block the pain fibers at this particular location. Say for instance, we're doing a procedure called a carpal tunnel release. We make an incision on the front portion of the hand right here. We go down and we look for the median nerve and decompress the nerve that causes pain, usually in the first three digits. Well, patients that have lots of comorbidities such as COPD or breathing problems, or asthma or sleep apnea or even heart problems or patients who've had bypass surgery or had a heart attack in the past. Well, if these patients go to sleep under general anesthesia, they're more likely to have complications. So some of the surgeries that we do in orthopedics, we do it while the patient's awake. We usually numb their skin with a medication called lidocaine or marcaine. And a lot of these medications block the sodium channel that decreases the pain response. Another procedure that we do awake surgery for is called trigger finger release. The trigger finger is usually a soft tissue that causes constriction of the flexor tendons here in the palm. Patients can have pain, inability to extend and flex their fingers, as well as discomfort when grabbing items. This particular surgery is very beneficial to do awake because once we release the tissue at a location called the A1 pulley, then we can have the patient actively flex and extend their fingers during surgery and that will give us some type of indication of how much more tissue that we have to release. The alternative is to have the patient wake up from general anesthesia to flex and extend their hand. But if the patient has continued catching and continued pain when they're flexing and extending their fingers, then we will have to put the patient back to sleep again to complete the surgery. So awake surgery is very beneficial in that aspect that it gives us live feedback in surgery to tell us whether we're doing the surgery correctly or not. Other specialties like neurosurgery have been doing awake surgeries for decades, usually in craniotomies or removing tumors from the brain. Having the patient awake allows the neurosurgeon to have more precise and more accuracy in removing the tumor from that portion of the brain. In addition, for knee replacements and hip replacements in orthopedics, there have been several studies that show that awake surgery under spinal anesthesia decreases the complications that these patients can have. They have decreased blood clots, decreased length of stay in the hospital, decreased other complications in terms of their pulmonary function, decreased cardiac events like a heart attack, decreased blood transfusions, and the list goes on. So spinal and epidural anesthesia is essentially injecting medication around the spinal cord to block the perception of pain. Usually an anesthesiologist injects medication around the sac of the spinal cord called the epidural space. A small catheter is left in place and then medication is given through that catheter to provide continuous relief of that pain. It's very common in like C-sections and when women are given birth to children, well, if you give a woman general anesthesia during childbirth, they most likely will not remember those first moments of that child's life. And after the spinal epidural is in place, the patient will not be able to feel pain or be able to move his or her legs. So during surgery, the patient is awake. They can hear us using the saws. They can hear us using the nails and the screws and the mallets. And we can actually talk to them during a surgery such as a knee replacement. Sometimes the anesthesiologist will give the patient a light sedation 
basically medication through their IV to make them a little drowsy so that they are not fully awake during surgery, but we can still communicate with the patient while I'm sawing through their particular bone or using a mallet to chip away at a particular portion of their leg. Usually after surgery, the spinal epidural will last for anywhere between four to six hours, depending on the type of medication that was given. And after surgery, the patients can get up and walk again and do some of the same things that they were doing before surgery. So yes, awake surgery is a real thing. Neurosurgeons have been using it for decades. General surgeons actually use awake surgery a lot in their particular field. As well as in orthopedics, we use it in spine surgery, we use it in hip and knee replacements, we use it in hand surgery. What are your thoughts? Have you experienced awake surgery? I would love to hear from you. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.